Good morning, Southern Hills. Good morning, Corona Cation, and welcome to day 57. Welcome to church. Today, we are getting started with a game. Now, I got this game from our lead pastor, Mr. Shannon Lovelady. He's doing this game with his family, and I thought, that is such a great idea, and we could do that on Corona Cation. So here it is. Today's game is Family Olympics quarantine edition. And so you're stuck at home with family. Let's make the most of it. Today, you can come up with as many events as you want for the Olympics within your family. You can keep score, see who can place gold, bronze, silver, I don't know. But why don't you come up with your first activity right here, right now, during church service. So let's see, there's so many options of things you can do. You could do something where maybe you need to balance something on your head and run all the way around your house. That could be a good agility and speed competition. Or maybe you do a rubber band activity where you do some archery and you need to line up those rubber bands and hit cups or something. Or maybe you do that crazy one where you lie on your back and use your feet and push real hard and see who can go the furthest or the fastest around the house. Um, there's so many different options. Let's see, Shannon did one where he lined up his family and then they called their dog to see who Kirby would come to. So everybody's calling the dog and whoever the dog came to first place gold. And so there's so many different options for you. I'm going to give you one minute to decide what game you're going to do and then I'm gonna give you one minute to do that game. There's gonna be a countdown. Now, it's coronation. At any point in time, if your family needs more time, feel free to push pause. But you're gonna get those creative juices going, figure out what the first competition's gonna be for your family. Later today, if you wanna continue with all kinds of more competitions, go for it. Even film some of those. Those would be fun to share. And... Figure it out, you got one minute to figure it out and then we'll do a one minute timer for go to actually do the competition. On your mark, get set, here we go. Okay, so what are some ideas, boys, at home Olympics, what, what can we do? We can oh, get it. My dog, the dog. Well, she, Mr. Shane already did that. I have some ideas. I have some ideas. We could run around the house, see who could be the fastest running around the house. So we know you. That's true, I would. No, I would. Um, what about, like, doing some parkour? Like, jumping from couch to couch like Levi likes to do. Okay, no, no I, would, I would still win at that. <laughs> um, I got an idea. The, what's your idea? One, the one that where you squat across your belly with. And who can do the fastest. Oh, yeah? I have an idea. I think you'll really like my idea. I think Mom will even like my idea. What if we get Nerf guns, we set up a target, and everybody gets three shots, the first one to knock over the cups win. Mm -hmm. That's what we're gonna do. It's time for us to begin the first round of our family Olympics. Make sure everyone understands what they are doing. If you need to, press pause and let the games begin. Coronation. I got 18 pieces of cereal. Nicole got 31. I was destroyed. She got the gold medal. 
How are... <laughs> she is happy about it. How did you do? Um, let's jump into our first video. Remember, later you can continue your family quarantine Olympics. It's going to be awesome. Let's see what's in store for today. Hey, everybody. Haley here. Now, I don't want to burst my own bubble, <laughs> but today is going to get sticky. <laughs> See? <laughs> I've always been amazed at people who can create art out of unexpected objects. So today, I've decided to give it a go myself. <laughs> and guess what my unexpected object is? <laughs> Ta-da! That's right, bubble gum! I've been working hard all morning getting it ready. Whew, I am sure glad I am done with that part. Well, here goes nothing. <sighs> oh, oh, wow, this is stickier than I expected. <laughs> I figure if I'm gonna be creating sculptures, I should start with one of the most famous monuments, the Arc de Triomphe in France. Oh, oh oui, oui, mademoiselle, le poisson, <laughs> le fromage. <laughs> I mean, really get into it. Right now it looks like a brain, but we'll get there. Sometimes situations in life can also turn out to be stickier than we expect. And when that happens, it's helpful to have determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. In today's story, Jesus' disciples were determined to carry out the mission he had given them. But before they could begin, they were supposed to wait. Let's see what they were waiting for and what happened next. That's just never going to be a hand. It never will. Enjoy the story! <laughs> Hi, Coronacation. This is Kristen Woodard here. We're so excited to see you this Sunday morning. This is also Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day. Um, we want to welcome you again to another day um, just virtually for All Stars and preschool programming. And we're super excited to share with you more about our word of the month, which is determination. Um, today, I have some special guests. They're my sons. This is Samuel over here. He is actually in the Treehouse uh, programming, but he'll be moving up for, to the All-Stars programming in the fall. So if you are um, a preschooler in our Treehouse programming, we will be moving up into the, if you're going into kindergarten in the fall, you'll be moving up. And so he'll be doing that and joining us then. So I'm super excited to have another child going through All-Stars. Uh, over here is Chandler. He's a second grader. He's waving there. Um, and he'll be going into third grade in the fall. So um, he's with us for another year in the All-Stars. And then this is Gabe over here. He volunteers with me in All-Stars programming on Sunday mornings. And he's actually in the 78 program and will be moving up to 912, which is our youth ministry at Southern Hills. So we're super excited to have you guys um, joining us today. We do miss you. We want to be together, all together. Um, but we're going to give you big virtual hugs. So go ahead, give us a big virtual hug. Oh, squeeze tight bear hugs. Oh, great job, guys. Thanks. You guys join in with us. All right, great. So let's go ahead and get started into our story lesson for today. So last week, we started talking about determination and we learned to keep going even when it seems impossible by looking at the story of Jesus sending his disciples to the world. Do you guys remember what determination is? Do you guys? Do you? Let's see, can you tell me? Oh, that's great. So he, Chandler said, finish what you started. So determination is deciding it is worth it to finish what you started. Do you guys have anything that you could share or think about that maybe you had determination for? Do you guys think of something? Hmm. I'll have to think on that, but maybe you can share with us or we can have something to share with you later on. So the story that we have to share with you guys today. We're picking up the story after Jesus had gone back to heaven and the people who believed in Jesus had gathered together for an important feast called Pentecost. Can you guys say Pentecost? Pentecost. Let's hear you say it, Pentecost. So just days before this feast, Jesus had given his friends a very important job to do. He told them to tell everyone about him from Jerusalem to every country in the whole world. Wow, that's a lot of talking about Jesus. I hope we can do the same thing today that he charged the disciples with long, long ago. 
So, as we get into the story today, I'll need some help from Samuel, Chandler, and Gabe. And you guys too. So, they're going to be our sound effects for today's story. So, we have lots of sounds to go over. There are some things though that we need to talk about. When I need you guys to stop the sound, I'm going to do this. And when that, what that means is when you, I do this, you guys can stop the sound, okay? And we'll continue with the story. Are you ready? Yeah. Great. Let's get going. So, as believers were gathered for the feast, a sound came from heaven like a strong wind blowing. Can you all make the sound like strong wind? Great job, guys. It sounded wonderful. All right, so let's listen to what happened next. This is Acts 2, 3. If you guys have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up. We'll read it together. The believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2, 4, it says they began to speak in languages they had never known before. It's kind of hard for us to imagine what it would be like to be there that day when everyone started speaking different languages at the same time. But I've got an idea that might give us at least some idea. So since we all can't speak a bunch of different languages, like we don't know Mandarin and we know very little Spanish and maybe a little French. So let's try something a little different. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do is we're all gonna say our birth date at the same time because all of us in our house don't have the same birthday. Okay, so Gabe, you're gonna say your birthday. Chandler, you're gonna say your birthday. And Samuel, you're gonna say your birthday. And I'll say mine too. You guys join us in, okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. December 19th. Wow. That was a lot of mumbling. I couldn't really understand anybody else. Okay, let's try and see if we can do it again. Ready? On the count of three, say your birthday. One, two, three. No, December 19th. October 7th. All right. Good job, guys. Okay, as we can tell, it's kind of hard and a little confusing. I really couldn't hear any one single person because everyone was talking and they were all saying different things. So there was an important reason why the Holy Spirit allowed the believers to speak in those different languages. And it actually wasn't confusing at all. After the believers discovered that they could speak in different languages, they went out to join the crowds who had arrived in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. These crowds of people had traveled from many different places where lots of different languages were spoken. When they heard the believers speaking, they were shocked to hear them talking about Jesus in words that they could understand. I know, I know, let's try something different. Okay, so this time on the count of three, we're all going to say, I, are you ready? I can trust God no matter what. I can trust God no matter what. Let's all say that on the count of three. You guys got it? You guys got it? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. I can trust God no matter what. Oh man, that was perfect. Great. Okay, so let's do it again. This time, let's say it three times, okay? On the count of three. One, two, three. I can trust God no matter what. I can trust God no matter what. I can trust God no matter what. Wow! Was it easier to understand what everybody was saying that time? Yes, of course. We were speaking in a language we can understand. Of course, it didn't happen exactly like that. But still, we can imagine how it might have felt when the people arriving for the feast heard people speaking about Jesus in their own languages. Hmm. So, people gathered and the other disciples and spoke to the crowd. Here's what he said in Acts 2, 22 through 24. Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. 
God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. What you yourselves know this, long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over to you. With the help of evil people, you put Jesus to death. You nailed him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead. <gasps> Peter helped the people understand everything that Jesus had done. He helped them understand that Jesus really is God's son, the savior of the world. Okay, everyone say, ooh and ah. Go. Ooh, ah. Let's hear it some more. It didn't stop. Ooh, ah. <laughs> we kind of have a spooky ooh and ah behind me <laughs> with a little ghost going on. All right. So that day, 3,000 people, 3,000 believed in Jesus. They decided to follow him and they were baptized. With the help of God's Holy Spirit, Peter and the disciples had already begun the big job of telling people everywhere about Jesus before they even left Jerusalem. Jesus had told his followers that a helper would come to them and now it had happened. The believers had the help of the Holy Spirit. They would never have to go along. This reminds us of something important. Do you guys know our bottom line? So today, it's God gives you what you need to keep going. Did you hear that? I'll say it again. Did you know that God can give you what you need to keep going? Even when we don't think we can keep going, God fills us with that ability of what we need fulfilled to keep going. So can you say that for me? Here we go. You guys ready? All together, we're going to say this. One, two, three. God gives you what you need to keep going. It isn't always easy to live God's way. God knew that we would need help, so he gave us the Holy Spirit. When things get tough, we don't have to rely on ourselves. When we believe and put our faith in Jesus, we receive the gift of the Spirit. And the Spirit helps us follow Jesus with choices we make every day. You see, God has always had a plan to send a helper. Jesus made a way for us to have a relationship with God. And because of Jesus, we can have help from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit helps us have determination to finish what we've started. The Holy Spirit helped the early believers in a big way. With the Spirit, they were able to begin the big job Jesus had given them. They had begun, began to tell the whole world. So remember, God will give you what you need to keep going. And one little short thing I wanna share with you all, and I share this on the Sundays that I teach in All Stars, is guys, take a moment, put your hand right here, and just breathe. And know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And just when you feel that fear or that anxiety or that uncertainty or you're just not sure about something, know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and all you have to do is breathe in the Holy Spirit and know that He has the answers for you. So guys, let's pray together today. Father God, thank you so much for just this time together with our church family and any new friends that are with us today through um, our virtual learning. God, I just thank you for this opportunity to still learn about you, even though it looks different and we're not used to it by any means. We know that we wanna be together, all together collectively in a setting again where we can see each other and celebrate. And God, you have prepared the way for that and we will patiently wait. In the meantime, God, give us the determination we need through the Holy Spirit. Let us remember that when we struggle, we have fear or anxiety. God, take those things away and let us know that the Holy Spirit is in us. God, once again, thank you so much for our church and for every one of these children. God, I pray that they um, prepare for a wonderful summer ahead and that I look forward to the day that we can all be together. In the meantime, God, I just thank you for the blessings of this time together. In your name I pray, amen. 
All right, guys, it was a wonderful time to talk with you and share Jesus' story and to have some side effects with us, too. And I think we missed one child. Samuel's disappeared. Gabe's still here. And Chandler's... There he is. <laughs> so you guys have a great Sunday. Don't forget, find some somebody special that means the world to you and tell them, Happy Mother's Day. Write a card. Write something that is important and special to you, that they are, they are important and special to them. They are important to you. All right, guys. Y'all, see you later. You guys want to say bye? Bye. Bye, <laughs> bye congregation. Today is Mother's Day, and so we want to celebrate mothers everywhere with something special. Today is Sweet Sunday, and there's so many different ways that you can be sweet with your mama. You can say some sweet words. You can give some sweet hugs. You can give her some sweets. Uh, make her some cookies. I don't know. But today, treat her special. Give her some love. And remember, all of the moms in your life, grandmoms, aunts, neighbors, all of the spiritual moms that you have, anyone that you want to celebrate, make today special for them. It is Sweet Sunday. John, I told you having the Holy Spirit would be so helpful. Well, yeah, Peter, I know so many different languages now. Hola, bonjour, salam. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. I know you're excited, but please. Oh, hi. Um, I was just finishing my school thing. Arc de Trump. <laughs> Wasn't today's story just awesome? I love how God's Holy Spirit gives us just what we need. He certainly gave the disciples what they needed. God has always had a plan to send a helper. In the Old Testament, people had to go to the temple in order to be near God's presence, and they weren't allowed to be directly next to him. But then, Jesus came on the scene. Yes! He made the way for us to have a direct relationship with God. And because of Jesus, we have the help of the Holy Spirit. Once they received the Holy Spirit, the mission of Jesus began to happen. What the disciples could have never done on their own, they were able to do by the power of God's Spirit. And God knew that. He knew that we would need help, so he gave us the Spirit. We don't have to rely on ourselves. Whew. Talk about taking the pressure off. When you believe and put your faith in Jesus, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Eee! I love gifts. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit doesn't just help us to accomplish impossible tasks. He is also there to help us and comfort us through difficult times in our lives. Maybe you know of someone who's gone through something tough, like having to move far away from friends or having to get a tooth pulled at the dentist, which I might have to do after this. And maybe you heard that person say, I couldn't have done it without God's help. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you believe in Jesus, you don't have to go through things alone. You have the Holy Spirit to help you. That's the one thing to remember today. God gives you what you need to keep going. So whatever's on your plate today, whether it's something hard or easy or perhaps just a lot of chewed gum that you're not sure what to do with, I hope you have an amazing day. See you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, wait, no. That's the wrong one. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good morning, guys. So glad to be with you again this morning. Uh, we're here every week. Get to playing guitar, which is not something I used to do in All Stars very much. Maybe I'll have to start doing that. But this morning, I want to teach you a new song. I know that some of you know it, but I don't think we've ever done it in All Stars. May have done it in 4, 5, 6, I'm not sure, but it's called Greater You, Lord. And we've done it a few times uh, in Big Church and on the live stream. We did it a few weeks ago. Uh, but this song is all about how, how awesome our God is and how, how He created us. He gives us the breath in our lungs. Every breath of life comes from Him and it's our job to give those back to Him, give those breaths back to Him in worship. Everything we say and we do can be worship to God. Y'all sing this with me. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the dark.